What's up, my dudes? Val here. Today, I'm going to be going over a top 10 characters in the game list. This is just a general list. It's not going to be who's better for Metal Rush. It's going to be whoever. In my opinion, it's going to be it's going to be taking into consideration that 90 percent of the game is is uh, progressive modes like legend stages, raid, story. That's most of the game. But there are some on here that are good simply because they're good in leaderboards. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it. I'm going to start with 1 and go all the way down to 10 so you guys can basically decide for yourselves. Um, I'm just going to basically talk about the units themselves. Not really showcase anything because I don't think I need to showcase. You guys should all know what all 10 of these units do. If you don't, then just you'll get the description from me. But uh, yeah, I feel like I have a pretty good list going. I had my community help me out with it on some of them because I was unsure. And this is kind of what we came up with. So, let's go ahead, let's get into it. At number one, you already know. You already know who I think is the best unit in the game. Adam, Father of Humanity. Why is he the best unit in the game? Simply because, while yes, he does fall off in leaderboard runs or like infinites, in infinites he tends to kind of turn into a less or a worse version of somebody else on your team. Um, like if you run him with like Hashirama, for example, he's going to end up as a worse Hashirama. You run him with Emperor Luffy, he's going to end up as a worse version of that. No matter what, in Infinite, he's going to get outscaled simply because he's. If you're trying to make a really good team with him, the rest of your team has to be useful, right? I know a lot of people are going to be like, but Valk, you can go, you can go raise attack into Hunter on him and have a 30 million, 30 bajillion attack stat, 50 million attack stat. But then you have useless people on your team, and in a leaderboard run, every pick matters. So if you're trying to have a useful, like an entire useful six unit lineup, he's always going to end up as somebody worse on your team. Uh, so he's not the best for leaderboard runs, but he's still really good for them because you can put like rising voltage on him. You can easily get him to like 12, 15 million attack with just raise attack and also have the rest of your team still be useful and then stick rising voltage on him for the CC as well as the damage. That's going to be really good. And Rising Voltage is actually a one of the main reasons I consider him the best in the game because whenever you take Rising Voltage and you slap it onto a 4 million attack monster like you can get him to by using UR++ Deku as the lead, um, you can take that into basically any progressive mode and just stomp it. And I do mean absolutely curb stomp it. You could also do the same with Bloodthirsty 2 with Metallic. You could take that make a some sort of bloody team or some sort of team where um you're going to have father of humanity you're going to have metallic then you're going to have a source of bleed and then you have him do bloodthirsty 2 with the 50 percent anemia and it's just in, ends up being insane insane damage and he just curb stomps almost every stage in the game to the point of pure insanity essentially he's a very very strong unit just takes a lot of brain power and a lot of know-how to basically fully utilize Adam. But if you can fully utilize Adam to the maximum of his potential, dear God, is this unit strong. Super, 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 super strong. So up next, in second place, this should not shock anybody as well. I don't think my top three are going to shock anybody. I don't think there's anything crazy in my top three, Gilgamesh. Um, very simply, he is a full AoE, raise attack, nuke. He can get up to a 10 million attack stat on his own with a 120 lead. Leads a very good category in Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter is a very strong team. Has a good leader skill. Raises attack. Uh, can get up to 10 million attack stat. Has a very cheap nuke condition. It's only like, I think it's a 500 mil damage requirement off the top of my head. And he's able to do this all while doing full AoE. And he's just an absolute monster of a unit. <clears throat> he is, Gilgamesh is insane. Easily the second best unit in the game. Very close with Adam for first. Um, I don't think this is any discussion. So next up, this one might stir some debate. But because I'm considering all modes, I genuinely believe this. Yuta. So Yuta, if you guys don't know, hits air on placement. And he does that because Rika hits air. Rika also applies despair. So on placement, he's hitting air and applying despair on placement. And he goes raise attack into love. Uh, he is full AoE raise attack. You can keep him on his full AoE raise attack for most stages, unironically. And that'll be good enough because you still have Rika applying despair. And then Yuta himself applying or hitting in full AoE. Just leaving him in raise attack will be enough. But then you go into love and you pair him with a Dark Flame Lover. And you get a 100% crit hit rate on about a 1.4 million attack stat. 
ends up turning into an absolute monster of a unit. Yuta is nothing to play with. He's a very, very, very strong unit. Absolutely worth your time if you ever plan on building him. Um, really, 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 really... I don't think I can put enough reallys in there. Really, really, really good. So next up, we're going to talk into another one who is really good right now because of how strong all of their teams are. Grimmy. Grimmy is on every good team you can think of. Spirit Warrior, Spiritual Sins, Youth, Summoner. Revenger is actually getting some support too. And he leads Determined Dreamer, which actually has some good units on it. If you click Determined Dreamer, you can see there are good units on Determined Dreamer. You have Golden Wind, you have Uta, you have Emperor Luffy. There are very good units on this team. So, Grimmy, what he does is basically once you get a max upgrade, I'm just going to talk about his max upgrade. He swaps through different attacks, and he has this random passive where he has an applied passive for every attack that goes off so if he does his aoe attack it's a different effect if he does his line attack it's a different effect it's a different dot it's a different debuff um and his clones he spawns in he spawns in three cones the three clones total up to his attack stat that he gets at the very end of his upgrades and those clones themselves can apply the debuffs also they also have his random passive so the clones are incredibly powerful you pair him with any tamer and his damage goes through the roof. Pair that with the fact that he gets uh, full AoE. He gets hybrid at upgrade 1. You upgrade him a single time and he has hybrid. He is such a good unit. He's so good. Uh, Grimmy, I feel like, is just somebody that everybody knows is good. That I don't really need to go in too much on. But Grimmy is a very, very powerful unit. So, next up. Uh, this one should also shock no, but I feel like this whole list is just not shocking anybody. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and let me clear my filter. Um, over here, we are going to get into Gojo. So, what does Gojo do? Gojo's a knockback, a slow, and a cosmic all-in-one unit with a very, very powerful time stop. But more importantly, Gojo leads Spiritual Sensitivity, the best team in the game. Gojo is able to basically put together the strongest setup, of, or the strongest collection of of teammates because he's able to lead this category this category has literally the best units in the game bar none like this category just is chock full of insanely strong powerhouses this team can literally dumpster all of abyss it can dumpster all the story it can dumpster all of everything um you guys can see i already listed yuda i already listed grimmy and now gojo in the top five this is number three, four, and five in order. This team is insane. And he's able to lead the whole thing as well as being a very, very powerful sport on top of it. I feel like all of you guys know what Gojo does by now, so I'm not going to get too into it. Next up is the other person who's actually here. Also, I don't even got to go any farther because number six is also on Spiritual Sensitivity Visor Captain. Doc, oh, why don't you have him evoed? Yeah. Anyways, what Shinji does is Shinji on his attack. He rewinds the enemies, so he sends them back a couple steps. But more importantly, what Shinji's used for is Shinji has an active that you can activate once you have a max upgraded. Whenever he's you are plus plus, he has an active that you can activate at any time once he's max upgraded. And what it does is it copies every enemy on the field for a percentage of the HP and shoves them down the lane. So you're able to use him to pretty much instantly clear and instantly wipe. He's widely considered as a nuke because of this. So he's a very cheap nuke, and you're able to really use him and pop off. And he's just a widely used unit because he's a good support because of Rewind, and then he has a nuke. And that makes him incredibly good for basically anything. And because I don't believe his nuke has a damage requirement, you're able to use him in progressive modes as well to go ahead and nuke down bosses. He's just an insanely, insanely valuable unit that I don't see leaving a top 10 spot anytime soon. Super, super, super good. Um, next up is one that I think might get debated because this is where we started kind of running out of, well, this is where we started having debates within chat is going from here on out. Next one up is Red Hair, LR Plus Shanks. LR Plus Shanks is the most CC packed into a single unit in the entire game. He has a nine second time stop on a non-global cooldown with a place limit of three and it's an overall 40 set five second cooldown so you do 
9 times 3, which means 27 seconds of time stop. Um, it's really, really, really good. And then on top of having all that time stop, he also has stun. And he also has a really good attack stat on top of that. So not only does he do good damage, he also has stun, he also has time stop, and he also has a the one of the uh, All Might buffs, you want to say, one of the All Might Chaos Symbol buffs, where he buffs New Era Pirates by 5% attack for everybody around him. So he ends up giving a good attack buff. He's, he's a good attack buffer. He's a stunner. He's a time stopper, and he has a good attack stat as well, as well as being full AoE hybrid once you get him to his full AoE. Needless to say, Shanks is absolutely one of the best characters in the game. I don't think there's a whole lot of debate on that. I think we can all come to agreements on that, on how good Shanks is. Now, this next one is definitely going to shock a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys are going to disagree with me, to which I say try him. Hashirama. So, I know, I know, I know I was wrong on him. I know I said many times that he needs a buff, that he needs an SPA buff, but the more I played with him, the more I realized Hashirama does a ton, and I do mean a ton, of damage. Hashirama hits so hard whenever you actually have a ton of debuffs on the enemies and you're able to actually prop justice to the max, because you can get Hashirama up to like an 11, 12 million attack set very, very easily in most progressive modes because he raises his attacks so quickly it's something like nine waves i think i was doing where you can actually max out his raised attack within like nine waves and you're able to really push it with him and once you get that raised attack maxed out which happens very very fast as i established uh you get to be able to start pushing the justice damage and boy does he do damage he hits so hard a lot of you guys are going to disagree with this pick at which point i just say try him give him a shot Hashirama is very, very, very good. Anybody that's tried him, anybody that's used him consistently can vouch for this on how strong he is. Um, his leader skill, I'm going to be real, it doesn't really matter. Ninja War is not really a team yet. Uh, they have basically Hashirama, Saratobi, and maybe LR plus Madara to a degree. But at the end of the day, Ninja Warrior definitely needs a couple more units, which I think we're going to get a Naruto Part 2 at some time. It won't be this weekend. Uh, I think it's going to happen next weekend. Don't quote me on that, but I think we will get a Naruto Part 2 at some time, at which point he'll become even more valuable than he already is, and I already consider him a top 8 unit in the game. So, next up is going to be the one I got debated on the most. Uh, at number 9, we have Golden Wind. Golden Wind on my number 9 slot. Now, why him? 1. He's a knockback. 2. He heals you for how whatever his attack is. 3. He restores stamina in an area around him. He is a unit that is so powerful, he can actually solo most stages. He can do it literally by himself. You, you slap him with, like, idle, and he can go solo Shadow Island. Um, he is so good. This unit is insane. He's one of the most slept-on units in the game, so I have him at number 9. Uh, but very specifically, i got to make this very clear to you guys. You guys are going to have him at UR++. You're going to be like, he's not that good. And I'll agree, UR++ is not a good unit. But UR+, Plus, in my opinion, is one of the best units in the game. And I've stood by this for a while. I fully agree with it. I think he just does so much for the team. He does stamina. He does heal. He does knockback. And then he does a good damage stat on top of it. You can get him into up to like 700k damage on his own team. 700k in that range. Um, and he's going to heal for that times 4. Because he's a place limit 4 with a non-global cooldown. So he's going to make it so you don't need to feed your units. You're going. He's a better healer than Peem or Shielder. He has knockback and good damage. This is just a really, really, really damn good unit. Highly suggest using him if you haven't. Um, he's a very easy unit to get the UR+, and he's so damn good. So now, for number 10, uh, there was a lot of contention on this. A lot of people wanted Dark Flame Lover. A lot of people wanted this or that. And I was just like, no, no. And I had to kind of decide based on how strong they are on the leaderboard there's one unit that is insanely powerful on the leaderboard that i had to consider that i had to put as my number 10 and that is emperor luffy emperor luffy if you don't know is an insanely scaling unit this unit scales up to some crazy attack stat and then ends up on superpower and superpower the way it works is it basically 50 percent chance to deal three times damage this unit made it on my top 10 list purely because of their leaderboard dominance and leaderboard presence. They are so damn good on the leaderboard. They're so damn good for pushing leaderboard 
that I simply had to include them to my top 10. Anyways, I feel like big damage here is basically all he does, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Let me know what you guys think about my top 10. Let me know if you guys agree, disagree. Feel free to post your top 10s below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.